Good morning, everyone. And today we our topic of discussion is uh, three very, very, very small topics. One is called as Sjogren syndrome. One is called as uh, mixed connective tissue disease, and one is one is called as overlap syndrome. Now, I I would like to start with Sjogren syndrome. Now, Sjogren syndrome, guys. This one is uh, um, Sjogren syndrome. Now, this one is an autoimmune disorder. Um, and again and again, I say just the same thing, you know, when when when, like when someone have one autoimmune disorder, so like it is associated with, or like they may have other autoimmune disorders as well, like SLE, rheumatoid arthritis, and things like this. And simply, Sjogren syndrome uh, is also classified as primary or secondary. So sometimes it is primary, sometimes it is secondary to such conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, or systemic lupus erythematosus or dermatomyositis. So simply it's an autoimmune disorder. Now it is characterized by dry eyes and dry mouth. Now in most of the books you will find the same thing, dry eyes, dry eyes and dry mouth. But um, remember maybe this is not the only things which are dry. Maybe the skin will be dry as well. Maybe the vagina will be dry as well, right? So it is characterized by dry eyes and dry mouth. Now dry eyes is also called as zero ophthalmia. Okay, zero ophthalmia. Or we also use something called as keratoconjunctivitis, like inflammation of the eyes or sicca. Okay, and dry mouth is also called as xerostomia. So, now why these things occur? They occur just because of lymphocytic infiltration of the salivary and lacrimal glands okay now you can say like Sjogren syndrome is an autoimmune disorder which is characterized by dry eyes and dry mouth and there is lymphocytic infiltration of the salivary and the lacrimal glands uh, and as, as I told you like uh, you will find this dry eyes and dry mouth everywhere, but it, it could be like dry everything. So simply, what happened, like uh, basically the patients, because their, their glands, they are infiltrated by the, by the lymphocytes. And it's a, like what's going on, like basically there is the formation of antibodies and these antibodies are circulating in the blood and then these antibodies go to the different glands and it causes inflammation and due to that you know they stop working and that's why they cannot produce any secretion so th this is like the whole process going on behind that but the end result is simply uh, like because of no secretions what happens uh, the patients they have features of dry eyes or keratoconjunctivitis sicca why because they don't have the secretions or tears so that's why they present with conjectivitis and blepharitis blepharitis is the inflammation of the eyelids and this inflammation if it is long standing it can lead to keratitis and ultimately you can say the cornea and the conjectiva will be gone and the oral involvement is basically dry mouth. So when we see their um, tongue, for example, we will found a dry and cracked tongue. So due to this dryness in the mouth area, they may have uh, more dental problems or dental caries. They have difficulty in swallowing, difficulty in speaking and all these things, right? 
And one of the thing, you know, very, very, very important guys in this condition is what, like, whenever the patients have this thing, you know, the disease increases the chances of lymphoma 40 times more in these patients. So they have increased chances of lymphoma. So simply, this is dry mouth and this is dry eyes. And uh, as I told you, so one point which I wanted to add over here, 40 times increased risk of lymphoma. What kind of lymphoma? Non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, according to the classification, how we classify this, classification is simple, you know, it could be primary, no other cause it could be secondary and whenever it is secondary remember it could be secondary to other rheumatolo uh, rheumatological or autoimmune condition like SLE, systemic lupus erythematosus, rheumatoid arthritis, um, dermatomyositis or uh, XYZ. It could be secondary to HIV as well. Now females are very 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 commonly affected than males so you can say females are too much affected than males and most of the people they are in their 40s or 50s when this condition it gets started okay so these are the features of this thing now guys uh, uh, basically what they have they have positive autoantibodies okay in the blood so well you can say like okay we will discuss that uh, I can write down clinical features over here clinical features of this condition so what's going on in this one they have what dry eyes I show you the photograph they have dry mouth and they have inflammation or blepharitis And whenever they have one, like the inflammation of like the brief is there, of course, they have they are more prone to get infections. They have dental caries, they have oral candidiasis. So, see, all the things are arising because there is no secretions. The inflammation of the angle of the mouth is called as angular chelitis, chelitis, angular chelitis. Okay, and Due to all the things, you know, they may present with sinusitis. Now, they have increased inflammation of all this region. So, they can present with sinusitis. They can present with, uh, what you can say, dysphagia, change in voice, even dry skin, or you can say dry vagina in females, of course. And due to this, you know, no secretions, what happens like they have some complications as well. For example, for example, sinusitis is a complication. They may have autoimmune thyroid conditions. They may have interstitial lung disease. They may have glomerulonephritis. They may have vasculitis because like all these are autoimmune conditions, right? So these things can occur. So these are the features which we can see and I show you like this is like how the tongue tongue look like and this is like simply the conjunctivitis. Now how to diagnose this condition? Diagnosis. Diagnosis starts with in these patients is uh, they do a test called as Skirmer test or you can say Skirmer tear test. What they do, like they are basically measuring the um, how much tears you can you are producing, right? So it is called a Skirmer um, SC Skirmer uh, test. Okay, so I will show you now how it is done. See what they do, like they put a strip like this in the ear and see uh, your your ears eyes is going uh, sorry in the eyes and 
your eyes will producing the secretions and you know they will become wet so after that after some time you know they can take it out and they can measure like you know how much what you can say fluid you have produced so you can see like it, it changes the color okay this is called as what skirmer tear test okay so this is one of the test so basically this it this test takes around 5 to 10 minutes and you know it keeps on measuring your secretion for the production in 5 minutes and uh, the normal result is like when someone is wetting more than 6 millimeter of that paper so this is one of the uh, tests you know which we can do to measure like how much secretions the lacrimal glands are producing right one of the tests is like uh, we can do biopsy simply biopsy of the gland and they can we can see like what kind of inflammatory changes are going on in there right now one of the diagnostic tests is uh, like or the the test which can help in diagnosis is uh, to check for antibodies called as NTRON NTLA nowadays they change the name so before they are called as NTRO and NTLA but nowadays they change the name like NTRO are also called as S SSB antibodies and NTLA are also called as SSA antibodies okay so NTSSA or NTRB SSB okay so sorry uh, NTRO are called as NT uh, SSA sorry and this one is a and LA is basically SSB. So now uh, this is like how they produce. So if they have positive anti SSA or NTRO, like they are the same thing, or anti SSB, or you can say anti LA. Okay. Or not just this, like or you can say positive chromatide factor or even anti nuclear antibodies titer is uh, more than 1 ratio 320 okay so these are some of the tests you know criteria or you can say which can help in diagnostics okay so uh, we can do a biopsy of the gland it could be salivary gland it could be lacrimal gland okay and uh, we can do the tear test okay for these patients so basically a classic triad of dry eyes dry mouth and arthritis you know basically arthritis of small joint helps in diagnosing the case the cases so arthritis can also be the presenting feature in these patients so now how we treat these patients is uh, basically uh, the important thing about like how we treat these patients is um, we go for uh, we have to protect the eyes of course right the first point is protecting the eyes in these patients okay so what they do is like uh, treatment so treatment goal is basically supportive the treatment is symptomatic or supportive because symptomatic right symptomatic treatment is there so what is the symptomatic treatment for dry eyes so like anyone who have dry eyes uh, you can give them what you can give them lubricating drops or oint ointments during night okay so this is one of the thing which we can do um, you can say like uh, there are some contact lenses also which are good to protect the cornea so there is artificial gels or artificial saliva is also available okay of course like because that is not comfortable that if your mouth is always dry and uh, you can say we can ask the patients or people to 
have you can say sugar free chewing chewing gums okay all lozenges you know like they they can help as well so that's important and whatever is there for example if there is fungal infection like candidiasis so treat with antifungal drugs okay so simply all all are symptomatic treatment if there is vaginal dryness you know we, they can get we can give them some uh, you can say lubricants like you know ky jelly is there so all the things can be are basically uh, given this way like this is how the treatment is done for these patients so this is like the symptom symptomatic treatment okay artificial tears and uh, uh, one of the thing you know a surgical type of treatment is also available for these patients for example for dry eyes you know what what can be done is uh, simply uh, like uh, one of the thing which we can do is like uh, surgical punctal occl occlusion i want to do like you know uh, they they close the drainage of the drop uh, the water from the eyes so for example if you will put the artificial tear so whatever will be there will stay in your eye or it will be you can say what is extra care will go can go out by the tear but simply it will not go into your nose by the nasal lacrimal duct so we ask them for to maintain good oral hygiene and uh, sometimes you know um parasympathetomimetic drugs can be used para sympathetomimetic drugs can be used of course like what is the function of them you know they are going to stimulate the secretions or saliva the saliva secretions pilocarpine can be given to treat this candidiasis you know oral anti antifungal drugs there is a drug which comes all over the world by the same name nystatin the statin can be used and of course it's a autoimmune disorder so we can suppress the immunity so for that we can put the patient on corticosteroids or immuno suppressive drugs can be given hydroxychloroquine can be given drugs like this thing can be given so this is like how how we treat these patients right and uh, that's it i think uh, like uh, okay so uh, now uh, other than that you know there are very very few two small topics you know which i'm going to cover in this topic in this whole lecture uh, for example one thing is called as um mixed connective tissue disease now what is mixed connective tissue disease is basically uh, this is a syndrome by the way syndrome with features of three different ctds or you can say connective tissue diseases okay uh, for example for like this is example it's, it's not like always these three but for example sle with scleroderma with uh, you can say polymyositis right so uh, what happened like simply the, the patient will be having some features of that some features of that some features of that so most of the time you know the people who have mixed connective tissue disease they have some common symptoms uh, for example most of them they have reynolds phenomena Reynolds phenomena okay and uh, swollen fingers so even like if you are going to write down you know this one even on Google or whatever right you know uh, I have never seen by the way guys you know in any exam they ask any question about mixed connective tissue disease I am talk talking about the basic exams I'm not talking about the rheumatological exam so you can see over here in mixed connective tissue disease when you will write you know uh, you will found like the photos which are related to the hands mostly with showing like the features of Raynaud's phenomena or with you can see 
uh, swollen fingers, swelling of the fingers, right? Like see, the, the fingers are swollen. Okay. Uh, now, yes, one of the MCQ which come in, maybe can come, okay, not so important by the way, but it like uh, the antibodies which we do like to check for this one, MTCD is basically called as anti RNB. This is antibody. And simply when this is a feature of uh, uh, three different type of connective tissue diseases, so of course like the treatment is basically uh, depends on the symptoms okay of the patient but anyone who have mixed connective tissue disease 60 percent or you could say up to 60 percent of them will develop into SLE and around 40 percent of them 40% of these patients uh, will um, develop scleroderma. So this is the prognosis of this condition. Like anyone who have MCDD, you know, either they will become like it will change into SLE or either they will become scleroderma. So it's not 60% or 40%, it's up to 60% or this one is up to 40%, uh, okay. So this is like how the research works guys. So uh, now uh, what they found is like around 10% of the patients, around 10% they, uh, they, they remain as MCTD or mixed connective tissue disease disorder. And simply, you know, this is uh, this one mixed connective tissue disorder because it's a collection of like different diseases. So the symptoms are of different condition and also they have more common uh, cardiac involvement, renal involvement, lung involvement. So that those things remain same. There is no change in that. Okay. So the most important thing, like most patients who have misconnected tissue disease, they have anti-RNP antibodies positive. Okay. So this is the important point to remember about this condition. And uh, the last thing is... Uh, uh, what you can say which I want to talk about is overlap syndrome now what is this overlap syndrome uh, like in very very simple words if I want to talk about overlap syndrome it is simply defined as um, you can say symptoms or syndrome with sufficient sufficient diagnostic features of two or more than two different uh, connective tissue disease. So what it means like you know uh, when for example you are you 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 are checking a patient and you found that you know the patient have all the diagnostic criteria for rheumatoid arthritis sorry SLE and with all the diagnostic criteria of systemic sclerosis. So of course, we will call it, call it as an overall, overlap syndrome. So like, of course, like this overlap syndrome, um, they are showing the features, the complete features of two different connective tissue disorder, two or more. So, uh, so whatever is like they are showing, of course, we have to treat that disorder, right? And uh, one of the thing, you know, is called as undifferentiated autoimmune disorder. So these are the patients, by the way, who have some evidence like the presence of autoantibodies in the blood. Okay. Uh, and with some features of that condition, but basically not enough to make the diagnosis. So what it means, uh, you can say a positive blood evidence, but not, uh, you can say, fulfilling the criteria of 
any disease right so for example someone have a positive autoantibody test but when you are going to check like uh, the features so they they did not meet any criteria to diagnose any condition okay so in olf syndrome of course like they have the complete features of criteria of diagnosing any condition but in this one they don't have the correct that they don't met the criteria of any condition we call it as undifferentiated autoimmune disorder okay so what is the prognosis of these patients simply um, like uh, they the most of the patients they develop autoimmune disorder later on so what it means like you can say like it could be a start of any autoimmune disorder right later on of course like they will start showing the sign and symptoms of that particular condition so this is called as overlap syndrome so that's all guys for this topic okay so now just two things are left uh, and again small small lectures not big lectures so uh, we will be having one lecture on uh, vasculitis and one lecture on gout that's it okay so thank you so much for listening